Hi, thanks for tuning in. My name is Jacob. And this video, we're going to be talking about how to search for scholarly sources. Now, specifically, um, this is part of an online class I'm teaching. So I'm going to show it how to do with the, the website for the college I teach for. Um, but you're going to find a lot of the basics similar no matter who you are or where you go to school. So, all right, we're going to start with students at, uh, at EAC. Okay, first thing you have to do, you've got to get to the library's website. So if you go up to academics, scroll down, you find alumni library, you click on that, and you are going to see these four options, catalog, EAC, search, libguides, and my account. What you want is EAC search. And for students at EAC, you're going to type in your... Uh, your Gila Hank account, your student ID, and that'll get you in. Once you're logged into the site, this is going to look a lot like any online search database that you find. Up here, you're going to see um, different search prompts. You're going to find ways to be able to narrow it down. Um, you can narrow it down by full text, by scholarly peered sources, journal titles, dates, things like that. All super, super useful things. So let me explain some of these things um, to help you out. Okay, up here in a search prompt, one thing you need to think about when you're searching for also a scholarly source, you aren't just searching to see if there's a paper exactly on the topic you're about to write on. Because honestly, if there is a paper exactly on the topic you're about to write on, there's kind of no point to you writing the paper in the first place. That is, if you plan on actually trying to add something to the world with your paper. Um, that is useful in many cases in academia, but um, what you're probably more likely needing to do is find sources that at least hit on the topic and can be useful to back up the point that you're trying to make or the research that you're conducting. So you don't want to find just exactly your paper, though if it exists, it's really useful for you to know it. Um, but in most cases, you're just going to want to find someone who's said something similar that you could bring into your argument. So let's say I'm going to write about Romeo and Juliet, for example. So I could type that in, but on the side, I can also see, I can narrow this down by... Um, I can search all of the text. I can just search author, title, subject terms, you know, even the ISSN numbers. But, uh, you know, let's just search everything just to give an example what this looks like. Okay, so, and this is similar for just about any college's uh, search prompts. Um, you're going to find ways to narrow down your source information over here. And here it's going to look a lot like Google, probably. You're going to see titles, um, maybe a snippet view, maybe some citation information here. And very useful, you can see links to the actual text or um, roundabout ways to get to it as well. So let's say you're writing about Romeo and Juliet, but you're not just writing about Romeo and Juliet. Maybe what you want to write about is um, um, maybe what you want to write about is uh, forbidden love, or let's just let's just type in theme and see what people come up with. Now the two different search prompts here can help you to narrow down a little bit, but we have so many things going on here. Maybe we want to, we want to narrow it down even more. So if you look on the left over here, we could have adjusted some of these things on the first search page, but we can also do it here. Let's say I want to only find sources that I can actually access. So I'm going to click on full text and it's going to update it. Now let's say I want to make sure that the sources that I'm using are scholarly peer reviewed journals. So I'm not looking for books. I'm not looking for news articles. I'm not looking for book reviews or some other source that might be in a database like this. What I'm looking for is a peer reviewed article. So let's explain what that is. A peer review article is a publication. It's a publication in uh, an academic uh, source and it's gone through a process of peer review. Peer review um, can be done a lot of different ways depending on the publication, but in general, what it means is that there's someone who's an expert in the field or several someones who've looked over this and they've kind of given it 
their seal of approval saying that this is good scholarly work and we sign off that this is okay. The way that this differs from other sources is that it helps to ensure uh, in many cases the validity, the reliability of the data that's being presented and it also helps to ensure that it has gone through a rigorous academic process while it's being written. So what does that mean for you? It means in most cases you can probably trust the source to be scholarly good stuff. Now, that doesn't mean that there are mistakes sometimes or that new data doesn't, you know, get presented that, you know, usurps or, or takes over or replaces previous data. But in general, you can probably trust peer reviewed sources. So if possible, it's a great place to work from. So I'm going to click that. And then let's say I want to make sure I just have really new stuff. Now, in the case of Romeo and Juliet, it's not like there's some hot topic issue that makes it new and relevant. But uh, I'm going to show you just how this works. So I can drag this back and forth to make sure that it's new. And let's say that your teacher only wants resources from the past, let's say, five years. So I'm going to say we'll go to 2010. I know it's 2017. Um, but it's not letting me go past that here. So I've got five years worth of sources. They have to be peer reviewed, full text, and they have to uh, meet the keyword criteria of Romeo and Juliet and theme. So the first thing that pops up is, uh, is written in surreal like that. It's, I'm not going to be able to read that, but over on the side, I can see academic journal, academic journal, academic journal academic journal goes on and not all of these are in English and that's okay. Um, it doesn't make it less valid, but it just makes it a little trickier to try and uh, to use these sources. So let's look at this. Uh, dreamers often lie on compromise, the subversive documentation of an Israeli Palestinian political adaptation of Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet. So if that sounds like something I want to look at, I might want to open it up, but you'll notice it's not showing me the link for the PDF full text on this one, but it will let me open it up in DOAJ. So I can click on that and see what that says. DOAJ is Directory of Open Access Journals, and I'm able to see it, the source, and I've got some information here, but it doesn't have the actual source. So that doesn't really help me much. I'm going to go back and maybe I'll just narrow this down by what is available. So I click on this. It says reading drama. Now I can tell right away this is probably not just about Romeo and Juliet, but it might be useful in a tangential way. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the PDF here. And it's going to open it up. It's going to give me some of the relevant information here on the side, which I'll be able to use for citing sources. And then I can also see the source itself. Now, here's some advice that I give to you. As you are doing your academic research, save everything that you access. Because even if it might not seem relevant at the time that you are looking at it, um, it might be useful later. So... You might want to go up here to download the PDF. You click on that, save a copy of it so that you can access it in your records later. Also, I highly suggest that if you do find a source that you think you're going to use, start taking notes on it right away and write down its citation information. This saves you time later having to back up and go find it. And that's really, really tricky. Now, if we look over here on the right-hand side, we're going to find some other... Um, options here. So we see that there's a, a link for Google Drive, for printing, for emailing the source out to ourselves. We can create a folder in our, uh, in our system database here. I can cite the source. Now this might be really useful. So I click on that and it's going to give you how to cite this source and different citation styles. So for using APA, there it is. If you're using MLA like my English classes do, then there it is. Now you'll notice, um, for those who are really familiar with citation styles, there might be some differences in how your teacher wants to cite in the purest form of citation, or it might even get the citation wrong. 
you need to be aware of it, but this is a great way to start. You just select it, copy and paste it, and you're good to go. Other good information here is it gives you the DOI number, which is um, kind of like the permanent address on the internet to find the source, which is super, super helpful. And it, uh, it gives you good credibility. If you have access to the DOI number, you wanna make sure you can include that. So we did this really fast. We, we searched the source, we narrowed it down, and we opened up something. We talked a little bit about what to do once you have a source. And we'll talk about more of the research process in coming videos, but uh, this is just a start here. So I hope that this video was useful for you. It was able to help you out. If you have questions, you can ask me in the comments below and I'll do my best to get back at you. Thank you so much for listening. Bye.